the discussion of graft selection for ACL surgery is, is probably the biggest category of discussion that you have with patients because there's a lot of information out there. And in fairness, um, there are different ways to skin the cat. And I think there are different combinations of graft, surgical technique, rehab protocol that work. And some surgeons do a really good job with doing it this way, and other surgeons do a really good job that way. So when you, when you take that aspect of it, and then you also take the fact that there's no perfect graft, that's what creates the dilemma. And it's a little bit of, it's, it's a big dilemma for patients. I think they can get overwhelmed with the amount of information that they get. Um, but it's a dilemma for surgeons too. Um, and so I try to filter it and just go through categories with patients, and I try to match the graft for the patient. And the way that I tell them is that for the vast majority of ACL tears, sewing the ACL back together is not an option. Even if you augment it in some way, it's just very well proven that the failure rate of that is higher, even with some of the more recent innovations of augmenting ACL. It simply has a higher failure rate when studied independently. So then you get into, okay, this is like a cable. This thing's exploded, you know, and you need a new cable. And so where are you going to get it? you got two choices. You can get a transplant from a deceased person, a cadaver transplant, which is generally a frozen graft. Uh, that has a shelf life of five years. It's procured sterilely, and um, the tissue banking practices in the U.S. have, have very high standards. Um, or you can get it from yourself. So maybe different graphs for different people. Someone my age who's busy, surgeon, needs to get back to work quickly, the cadaver graft has a lot of advantages. A little bit less surgery time, less rehab, less pain, get up and get going, get back to work pretty quick, and pretty similar um, outcomes, you know, similar failure rates. They're a little bit different, um, but there's some pretty good advantages uh, of going that route. Um, young athletic kid under 25, the failure rate of allografts or cadavergrafts is way higher, six times higher. And the further out you follow them, the higher that gets. And so this multiplier of failure, you know, kind of compounds over time. It may be two or three times at two years, but as you get out five, six years, it's six times higher failure rate. So I think pretty much across the, the board, people would not be recommend. I think the standard would be to not recommend a cadaver transplant, you know, or allograft in, in a young athletic kid under 25. Then you get into, okay, well, what are my options, you know? Most people will go from the, take the graft from the same knee, um, and you have three different reasonable choices, and they all have the, a different list of pros and cons. There's different categories that you judge these graphs in. So, you know, one graph may win this category, and then you come to this category, the other one wins. And so you, you, you have to decide what are we going to emphasize here. Um, the three graphs that you would be talking about, patellar tendon, that goes from your kneecap down to your tibia, right in the front of your knee. That's a big, strong tendon. You can take about a third of it uh, with, without really any long-term adverse impact. Um, it's, it's an excellent graft. It's really strong. It's really stiff. You can fix it really rigidly. Um, but it comes with a little few sets of negatives. You can get a little numbness to the side of the knee and the skin. Uh, you can get tendonitis or kneeling pain. And I, I think you know, it's a pretty significant percentage of patients that get a little bit of that. I would say it's only really, if you do it, if you do the graft harvest correctly and you, and you repair it and graft it correctly to let it heal, the incidence of that's about 5%. It's probably only a really big problem in about one out of a hundred. That's what I tell my patients. It's not zero though, you know, so you have to talk about those things. Then you move, but, but the success rate of that is in the 96 to 97% long term three to four percent failure rate. The chances of tearing the other ACL are eight percent. So that graft is a durable graft. It's not bulletproof, but neither is your own. But you can say, okay, well, it looks like after this surgery, it's, it's statistically, both in my practice and in the literature, it's about twice as common to tear the other ACL as it is to tear 
uh, a patellar tendon graft, a BTB graft, bone, tendon, bone. But it comes with that little short list of negatives, you know, so you gotta, you gotta weigh what's, what's really our number one goal. In general, in my experience, or my practice, my number one goal is to restore stability and have that hold up. So that's a pretty good option. Hamstring grafts are good because you never ever get kneeling pain or tendonitis or the numbness. It does not have that set of, of issues. But you can get hamstring weakness or scar tissue in your hamstrings and the failure rate's higher. And the failure rate's a lot higher in young women and women athletes. So there's some studies in, in girls soccer that show up to 28, 30% re-rupture rate over a couple of two or three years. So it's, I think when you talk about long-term durability and stability, that graft is not really measuring up very well. So people have started looking for different options from that, for, you know, rather than going that route. And many kind of came back full circle to the patellar tendon graft and do that. That's reasonable. Others have chosen to go to the quadriceps tendon. You know, that's reasonable too. Has its own little set. That's the tendon above your kneecap. And it's a strong graft. It, it, it can be a good ACL reconstruction. It's harder to get your thigh strength back after that graft. There's a pretty good study that shows that. And I think the failure rate's kind of in between. I don't, I, I've never seen results that really measure up to the bone tendon bone patellar tendon graft. But, you know, in order to get those results, you're accepting the slight risk of those three things that we talked about.